Welcome to BlizzCon 2017 coverage, brought to you by blizzpro.com. I think to start with, classic games to a lot of people is kind of a mystery. Like, it's not real clear kind of what the team works on, that kind of thing. So I guess talk us through what the team's working on, what your role in particular is. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a great question. I would say uh, even inside the company, uh, we still catch some of the other developers off guard as far as uh, what we do. Uh, Classic Games uh, traditionally up to this point has uh, curated our previous titles, you know, like the Diablo 1, Diablo 2, Warcraft 3, all these games, StarCraft 1, they all sit on their legacy servers is what we call. Um, with the launch of StarCraft 2, we had launched the new Battle.net system. All our previous titles kind of sit on a different server section. Um, and so the team has really been in charge of making sure that the servers are working, if there's any issues, you know, they, they kind of fix it. Uh, and we kind of came up with a, a bit of a rare opportunity as we were looking at some of these older games that we looked at, at Brood War and realized that there's some work we need to do to make sure that the game actually, f you know, fits on modern computers. Like modern computers weren't playing this game, right? So um, we had a, just a really interesting opportunity to kind of look at it and say, hey, if we're going to fix these problems, should we do a little bit more, right? And that's when we kind of came up with the idea of, uh, you know, doing the 4K resolution, redoing the assets, but kind of keeping the game as a true classic. But, um, you know, as the team itself, we are starting to transition from not necessarily just taking care of these old games, making sure that they work, because there's so many fans out there still playing these games, right. um, but to kind of start asking these questions. What more can we do? Yeah. And now, as a lead designer, what do you do specifically? What's kind of a day in, in the life of you? Uh, you know, it's, it's been interesting. So uh, I'm in an interesting position on the team because most of these games have already been designed, right? right? Um, we never were intended to ever go to the game of like a Brood War and say we're going to mess with this gameplay because, you know, there's millions of passionate fans out there that say this game is perfect, don't mess with it. And we agree, right? So as we look at bringing the game onto the modern platform, there's other things like uh, people are familiar with, uh, you know, the current games out there. They have observer modes or the way that the chats, re you know, the guild systems, um, matchmaking, you know, so so these are, as far as what I do now, um, I'm having these discussions with other people on the team saying, okay, the gameplay is going to stay core. Uh, what are the other things that you know gamers come to expect from these games that I could actually help with and come up with new social systems? Maybe there's a new progression system, something that just rewards player for you know playing the game that they love. Nice. Now, in the opening ceremonies, we heard about Warcraft Classic, but there haven't been a lot of details out yet. Now, is that something that falls under the umbrella of Classic Games, or is that separate? No, I would say that's separate. Uh, I, I'm like you and everybody else out there who's watching the opening ceremony. Um, I kind of look at it through fresh eyes. Uh, I could probably go and look at the other teams and what they're doing, but um, the Warcraft Classic, uh, I believe in the context of what they were saying, was more about the uh, Warcraft vanilla right. server. So right, that's it. That was the title they came up with. I was like, hey, everything's going classic. I like yeah. this. It's catchy. <laughs> it's a catchy name. Yeah. So you mentioned that we've got <laughs> StarCraft Remastered. We've got Brood War back, which was such a big hit, kind of the, the first big title for the company. What other games, and I know this is something maybe you can't talk too much about, but what other titles can we maybe see remastered versions of? And are there any titles that are just not on the table for whatever reason? Uh, you know, like you said, there, there's nothing we can announce um, at this time. But, you know, the classic games or have been looking at these games for a while, right? Like we've done some updates recently to Diablo 2. We've mm -hmm. done some updates to uh, Warcraft 3. Um, None of those have been talked about to the next level, you know, because StarCraft Remastered being out there. Uh, there's still some more work we need to do for StarCraft Remastered. So, right. you know, it's a small team. Uh, we're trying to be agile. We're trying to do a whole bunch of different things at once. But we really want to make sure um, that, you know, StarCraft Remastered is really set up to do all the things that we expect it to do. Yeah. Now, are you able to talk about any of the things that you're still hoping to do for StarCraft Remastered? Yeah. Um, one of the things that we, we are looking at right now, and um, it's a little bit further down the road here, uh, but we want to get the team matchmaking up there. Okay. You know, right now everything is 1v1, right? Because that's what people know StarCraft Brood War as. Um, right. But we want to say what's 2v2, 3v3. So we want to get the matchmaking in there. Um, there's still some more work we need to do surrounding the league system, right? Okay. We have a global matchmaking. The idea is is that any time you can look at this ladder and say, that person is the best in the world, right? Um, but we don't have the leagues in yet. We don't have you know, the distinction of what's this uh, group of players and how do we rank them, right? So there's still some work there. Um, we're pretty close to getting to a league placement. Um, we still have a little ways to go, but uh, those are some of the things you could expect. Uh, there's 
hardware updates. Um, we're still making improvements to, you know, uh, hardware for some of the new lighting that we put in with the mm -hmm. with the new resolution. Um, you know, we're still working on latency. You know, because we went global. Uh, you know, the latency from someone in Europe playing against someone in Korea I is not the best, right? So we've made some uh, recent updates where it's more of a dynamic uh, adjustment. So it starts looking at these and it'll change the latency based on the matchup. Uh, it's been positive so far, uh, but, you know, the team thinks there's still room for improvement there. Nice. Now, when you did the Starcraft Remastered project, what were some of the challenges that you guys ran into in doing that project? And maybe what things ended up being easier than you thought they might be? Uh, I don't know if there's ever anything easy. <laughs> never that enough, easy. Eh? Never, never easy. Uh, you know, I, 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 this probably catches a lot of people off guard, but, uh, you know, when the, we first looked at StarCraft um, Brood War, we couldn't find the art assets. Okay, well. Like, you know, they didn't live in some kind of digital vault somewhere within uh, the company. We asked around, you know, some of the original people. They didn't have those floppy disks? They just weren't <laughs> around, right? So, you know, the team really had to kind of reverse engineer a, an art pipeline mm -hmm. and extract those art assets in order to even, you know, start improving that. So uh, that was probably the biggest hurdle uh, that we ran into, which is, you know, the name of the game was to oppress the resolution on here, redo right. art. Well, where's the art assets? Yeah. All right. So we had to get it from the disc itself. So uh, that was one of the biggest challenges. And uh, as far as easy, um, maybe just ultimately, you know, the passion on the team. You know, the guys who are working on this team and the girls uh, are really just super passionate about uh, our older titles, right? Yeah. They were big fans growing up playing StarCraft. So now they have an opportunity to actually work on StarCraft, you know? Yeah. So getting cool. people to come in and help, you know, even from outside the team, you know, you get the web and mobile teams and you get these, you know, the video post-production teams and all these external groups that help support any dev team. Um, we weren't on their radar, okay. right? And so a lot of the stuff, you know, you, you need to make sure that they, kn they have enough time. Um, but they were so passionate about what we were doing that they actually just on their own time and actually contribute oh, to nice. it. So that ended up being really uh, a real pleasant surprise. It's just the ultimate support we got from mm -hmm. the whole company. Yeah, and it seems like that's just kind of the Blizzard culture as a whole, right? Everyone is so passionate about what they do. Oh, absolutely. It's it's one of the things getting in the door, right? Yeah. Like everyone we talk to is like, it's one of the questions you, on any team. You know, even if it's not a developer, if, you, if you're getting into uh, tech support or, um, you know, uh, let's think IT or something like mm -hmm. that, Everybody in the company just loves playing uh, games and right. you know Blizzard games particularly. So nice. Now you guys made some real interesting design choices with Brood War as far as like keeping some of the old unit control groups the same. Can you talk about the challenges and you know how difficult that is to update things to the player's current perception of what a game should be, but stay true to some of the. I mean, I don't want to call them limitations, but that's what they were back then. Yeah. And you, yeah. Well, I mean, most of the biggest challenge is our own expectations, right? Because, you know, these guys are looking at the code, and we know that this game is kind of old, and the pathing and the unit behavior and things like that, you're just, you know, if I just change this one thing, is anyone going to notice? Right. right. Um, and the reality is, that, you know, we, we just kept that line. Like, is this, is this something new, or is this, you know, the old legacy? And we always stuck to the old legacy. Uh, the one thing we did come across that we felt... Uh, the modern player would kind of want, which was custom hotkeys. Right. Uh, we went out with the PTR on the custom hotkeys, and it blew up in our face. Like, mm -hmm. we were really caught off guard by the pushback saying, you know, this is going to make, you know, so-and-so player overpowerful because mm -hmm. he right now has to move his hand all the way to the other side of the keyboard, and, and if he could keep all the keys right next to him, how is he going to get to beat him? And, right. And, you know, we, we kind of pushed back a little bit. said, it's okay, this is just PTR. Let's just see how it works. And um, then we started talking to pro players, and we're like, no, this is okay. We like right. this, right? And so I think once the pros kind of bought in onto the idea and they were okay with it, then the fans are kind of like, oh, maybe it's not such a big deal. Right. So that that's kind of, you know, on the realm of, you know, how we're introducing new stuff to the game without mm -hmm. actually changing the gameplay. Now, do you guys have any things that you've learned from your work on doing StarCraft Remastered that are going to maybe help your future projects, kind of make them more efficient? Yeah, you know, there's there's probably lessons across the board. Um, you know, one of the bigger things is that uh, we used an external um, team to help really build the art assets, right? And this was kind of a new relationship um, and really just kind of figuring out how does that work entail? Like, how mm -hmm. do we communicate with them? Um, they're all the way over in Malaysia. It's a company okay. called Lemon Sky. Um, and they did great work for us, right? But there was, there was some learning steps along mm -hmm. the way that I think as we move forward and if we were to entertain the idea of doing this again, um, obviously, if we were to work with that team, we obviously we have a relationship, but 
just learning those relationships and applying it mm -hmm. to any other company, I think, will help us a lot. Do you guys outsource things like your artwork often, or is it mostly in-house? Was that something it's special for this project? It's mostly in-house, uh, mm -hmm. and this was a special case, right, because we were, were a small team. Um, we were intentionally trying to stay small and agile so right. we could do different things. Um, and so the question was, well, who's going to do the blunt of this work, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, you know, Brian Sousa, who's the, you know, the art director on the team, you know, he, he has his art test and he's talking to these companies and, you know, and the, the rest of the company gets to weigh in on it too. So it's not right. like these companies are having any liberties on the changes. It's, it's really just kind of fit within, you know, the Blizzard culture. And we found a, a company that kind of lined and, you know, really worked out really well. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, everybody pays attention to everything Blizzard does. They read those job postings and things like that. So you've had postings recently for Diablo, Warcraft 2. Is there any news to share on those fronts? Uh, no, nothing new. Um, yeah. Let's like I said earlier, we've we've been making some little updates to some of the uh, legacy servers, um, and the reality is for some of these older games, the fans know the game better than we do, right? Right, and so a lot of times it's it's kind of trying to figure out if there's somebody from that community that has these expertise. You know, we'd be definitely interested in talking to them, right? Because I think they could help service those communities better from inside Blizzard and then trying to do it from the outside. So a lot of times that's what comes up is like, hey, you know, D2, we're looking for a server engineer because we're having, you know, some issues right now with their server. So um, no, nothing, it's, it's not paving any way to say what's coming next. It's just, you know, all these games fall underneath the classic games. And, you know, we're just doing our best to make sure that it's a good experience even now for players to play these games. Okay, nice. Now you do a lot of these interviews. Are there, is there like a certain question you're really hoping someone asks you, something you're passionate about that you're, you're like, man, I really want to talk about this? No, you know, it's strangely enough. I, I've, I've never been asked this question. Um, <laughs> That's my catch-all. <laughs> when I'm running low on stuff, I give you this one. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I, I've been at the company for, for a fairly long time now. Um, and it's, it's just, it still amazes me even now, after all the BlizzCons I've been to, you know, even like I said earlier that, you know, the, the opening ceremonies is still fresh eyes to me, right? right? Like I still get caught up in that energy. And um, I usually try to bring friends in who've never had this experience. So I cycle friends out that have never been here before. And, and I have my buddy here today and, you know, he's getting experiences. So I get to kind of live through his eyes and, you know, just the energy from, you know, the fans here is just, it catches me a guard every single time. It's just great. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate talking to you. Thanks for all the people at Blizzard that helped make this happen. Well, it's so a pleasure. It's right. great meeting you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. For more BlizzCon 2017 coverage, check us out at blizzpro.com. Subscribe to us here on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and Facebook at BlizzPro.